All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are doing Windows Server 2019 today. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of, of uh, Active Directory. We're going to get the server set up. Right now, it's just a blank slate. It's just got access to the, uh, to the virtual host only network with the PFSense off to the side. Uh, originally, I was going to go through PFSense, but I think I want to... I think I want to uh, increase the speed, right? I think I want some more core. I don't want to go through latency because it's going to be doing some updates. And anytime you start updating a system, uh, especially in a home lab, I just want it to go, right? I don't want to be here for 15 hours while it's updating. So I'm going to make some a couple adjustments in my Windows Server 2019. <coughs> now this is the A. I'm going to go ahead and make this A for starters just because we haven't done that yet. Uh, we have B up here, which is just a clone of A right now. I'm going to go into system. I'm going to give it a little bit of extra RAM. I think I'm going to go up to 8. Actually, I think I'm going to go up to 16. Does it need that much RAM? No. No, it doesn't. But I'm going to go ahead and give it to it. Uh, I'm also going to increase the processors up to 4. Actually, I think I'm going to go up to 6 just because I've got them to spare. Um, I just want it to go quickly. That's, that's my entire goal here. And then finally, I'm going to bypass that firewall. I'm going to go straight to the network to NAT network so that it can have direct access to the internet. Um, I'll change this back once I'm done with this updates and doing everything that I wanted to do. But for today, I just want to get it up and going. I want it to get it moving. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up and then uh, we will begin configuring this Windows Server to be a little bit more uh, user friendly. And matter of fact, before I, before I start doing Active Directory, I might actually delete this Windows Server 2019B uh, and reclone 2019A because a lot of the updates I'm going to need on B anyway, uh, and I don't like to update twice. So let's uh, let's tackle that. And we'll be back. All right, so here we are. We're back in our Windows system. Uh, I'm going to click on that to capture it. I'm going to do the right control and then delete. That'll get me through the uh, to the Windows or to login. And then we made our password Tor capital T O O R one twenty three exclamation mark. I know, really strong password there for our home lab. Uh, and then we're going to go straight to the control console. I want to make sure that we have full internet access as we're bypassing that firewall, uh, which should be up in a minute. And yeah, I I set it up incorrectly, or I, I didn't set it up. I didn't shut it down correctly, so it it yelled at me and said, "Hey, what's going on here?" Now this first screen right here, the server manager, it's going through and it's doing its checks as we reset it. It's been powered off a little bit. Uh, and then it's gonna go through and I should expect to see some red right here in a few minutes. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do, I've already got it done, but we're gonna go and we're gonna type in CMD. We're gonna open up that command prompt and we're actually gonna tie it to our taskbar, which I've already done. So you're gonna right click and then pin it to taskbar. I've already got it pinned, but it will be right there. So I don't need that anymore. We're gonna open up this command prompt. I'm gonna do an IP config. So we're operating on 10.21, or 10.0.2.21, excuse me. Uh, and we just wanna make sure we can have access to the internet. So I'm gonna do 8.8.8.8. .8 That's Google. Should do it three times and then stop, does. And then I'm gonna do an NS lookup for amazon.com, just to make sure our DNS is working properly, and it is which is on that 8.8.8. .8 .8. So I'm gonna close that out. Okay, now we're ready to move on. Okay, so now we need to go through and we're gonna insert our uh, VirtualBox edition. So we're gonna go to Devices right at the very top. We're gonna insert Guest Edition CD. Click on that. That should allow us to go into the system. It's gonna go through its thing. We're gonna write back down to our files. We're gonna go into our D drive, virtual guest editions right there. We're gonna blow this up a little bit. And you can see we have VBox Windows editions right there. We're gonna double click on that. And we're just gonna install this. All right, once we get to this screen, I actually want to reboot later. So I want to manually boot, reboot later. We're going to finish that up. I can close this out. Uh, we're actually going to check for updates now. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to go to settings. Right off the bat, you can see update. So check for updates. 
we can see that we're missing quite a few updates, so I'm going to install those now uh, and let it do its thing. Uh, now this is going to take some time because it's going to start installing, and then once these updates are done, we'll reboot the server. So while this is doing this, you don't have to wait for it. Uh, we will see you in a little bit. Okay, so this took a little bit of time. I want to say it took about an hour to complete, um, which is fine. We're going to restart it, and then we're going to get started on what we need to do. Okay, here we go. Let me get in here. Control and then delete. And then our password is Tor123 exclamation mark. Now since we uh, redid the the snapshot, excuse me, the uh, the guest editions, we can actually do this now. And we can go to view and then auto resize to guest mode um, and so we're ready to take off we're ready to get this thing up and going you'll also notice that it doesn't do the capture anymore so it's a lot better easier better and user friendly so you can see that we've got everything up and going now i'm still seeing one service issue i can click on that and it say downloaded maps broken it was stopped so we can do that that's not a big deal i'm just gonna press ok we'll take care of that later with a new update um, and so this thing is up and going the way it's supposed to now that I've, I've got it updated, I'm going to go back through and make some more changes. So I need to shut this down again because we're going to have to go back to our original network so that we can uh, set up that domain controller. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to do a planned operating system recovery. We're just going to shut that down. Uh, and then we have to go back into VirtualBox while that's shutting down uh, and change a few settings. I'm also going to clone it because no matter what happens, especially in, in a virtual setting, a lot of times you'll find that when you start screwing around with things, excuse my language, um, something gets messed up. And so you don't really want to deal with that sometimes. So I'm going to drop this back down to, what is it, 2 gigs of RAM. There we go, 2048. And I'm going to drop it back down to two processors. I'm also going to take the, nat the network back down to a host-only adapter. So I'll press OK on that. Once that's done, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to clone right here. Clone. Now, this will take a few minutes to take effect. Um, but if I screw up something on my Windows 2019A, I have something else to go back to. And it's already updated, right? So I don't have to update more versions. I may just replace my 2019 server B with my cloned version. Or if I want to create a new server, I've got this fresh server to go through. So I like to put 2019, get rid of that, and I'm just going to put fresh. Now, this now becomes my base server for anything that I do 2019 wise. I'm gonna do a full clone. I'm gonna finish that off. And then I'm gonna move that clone down to my to my OCIs down here, which will be basically just a, hey, this is a fresh server. You can see here, I've got a clean one. I think I've called it clean before. This is a clean clone for Ubuntu. Uh, this is a clean, right? So this was the original clean. So you can see sometimes that I'll, I'll screw something up, especially with Ubuntu where I push on the wrong command. Or maybe I know that I've got something else coming on and I want to go through it. Uh, it'll just go through. So anyway, it's at 6% now. This is going to take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Okay, so I've logged back into the system. You can kind of see that I've got my clone over here, the fresh one. I'm going to drag that down and get that out of the way. Uh, and our 2019 is running. So uh, we need to go in there and put up a static IP address. So the first thing we need to do... It looks like I lost internet, which isn't a big deal since we're setting up a static anyway. Is I'm going to open up those network settings. And we're going to drag our firewall over here because it's important to understand where our, where our IPs are. Now, if you remember, when we set up our IP addresses for our DHCP, we set it up for 10 through 240, which means I have 1 through 9 as static. A one's obviously being used by the firewall, uh, so I could use like eight or nine for that, or I could use 242 or 250. It doesn't really matter, but I need to set it up. So I'm going to go to Ethernet, change adapter settings, change adapter settings, there we go. Right click on that, go down to properties, go down to ICPv4. We're going to use the following IP address, and we're going to do 172. .16.1, and I think we're just going to use .8. 
Uh, subnet mask is going to be 255.255.2.0.0. Default gateway is going to be 172.16.1.1. That's our firewall. Press OK on that, OK on that. It's going to take it a second. I may have to uh, refresh it, which isn't a big deal. It says, do we want to allow it? Yes, we do. And we should have internet now. So let me go back through here. And we could test that internet through the, uh, through the system. So we're just going to do an IP config. Here we go. We're at that 172.18. So I'm just going to ping 8.8.8.8. We've got IP there. And then I'll do an NS lookup or Amazon.com. There we go. We're good to go. So we have internet now. So to start our, our directory, we go to manage, add roles and features. We're going to hit next. We're going to do role based or feature based installation. Our server selection is going to be that 192. Now look at our IP address. It's still at dot 11 instead of dot 8. Uh, and since we're on an active IP address or a static IP address, we need to go ahead and restart this server. Okay, so we've restarted our server now. We're going to add roles and features. Go ahead and click next. We're going to do role-based uh, or feature-based installation. Click next again. You can see that our IP address is correct now, so we're going to hit next. Then we go through and we decide what we want to do. Uh, so we're going to add Active Directory Domain Services. You'll see that we're going to add features. We can scroll down. Uh, we can do a DNS if we want to do DNS. Uh, it just depends on what, what features you want to do, right? So I'm going to add DNS. I'm going to leave DHCP off because we're using the firewall to provide those services for us. Uh, so we're going to keep on moving on. So I'm going to hit next. And then we can go through. We want group policy management, which is checked. We could do... Uh, network virtualization, which we're not going to do because we don't want to do virtualization and virtualization. Remote service tools. We can do SMB if we wanted to. We want Windows PowerShell. We want Windows uh, Defender added on. So we're just going to hit next. Hit next again. <coughs> we're going to configure the DNS. Uh, we want to restart the destination server automatically. So go ahead and click that. It's going to be automatic install. And then we're just going to hit install and let it do its thing. So we're going to promote the server to a domain controller. So go ahead and click that. Then we're going to add new forest. And we can create the root domain. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine homelab.com. I'm going to hit next. Uh, and then you can see here this is forest functional domain. Windows Server 2016 is the highest that we have available ability to. We're going to go ahead and keep on doing that. And then we just need to add a password. I'm going to keep my password, the Tor123 exclamation mark. Because again, it's a home lab. If it wasn't a home lab, we would need to, uh, to do something different. And then generate DNS delegation. We're hit next. You can see the DNS BIOS domain finally populated with home lab. We're going to hit next. Okay, then we're going to hit next again. We can scroll through and see if there's any issues. Hit next again. It's going to verify prerequisites. So it's going to take a few seconds for this to populate. And then once the prerequisites fill in there, we're just going to hit install. And we'll sit here and let it do its thing. So it keeps on going through. Uh, eventually it will reboot. And then once it reboots, we'll, uh, we'll move forward. So we're going to pause the video for this. All right, so you can see that it finished all of its uh, pre-configurations and everything. We're just going to let it close and, and restart. And then once it restarts, we'll, we'll have a domain controller as well as a DNS. OK, so it finally came back up. However, you'll notice that it looks like we lost internet. So we we'll have to go back in and check that. So Tor123, exclamation mark. Make sure our firewall is still up and going. It's good. So hopefully it'll just clear itself up. All right, so we're going to open up this command window and see if we can't figure out what's going on. So IB config. We're on a dot eight, so we should have internet. Let's let's see. Let's do a uh, ping 
Amazon, Amazon.com. So we're hitting it. <clears throat> it's saying no network access, but we have network access. So uh, it may just be having a little bit of an issue. Let's do an NS lookup. And we'll do we'll do google.com and so it's definitely there yeah and see the error went away so probably just didn't have enough time to to get what it needed to do so let's go back up to manage oh, I'm sorry tools and we're gonna do Active Directory users and computers it's like the fifth one down and then if you look at this home lab we're going to right click on home lab, we're going to go to new, and then organizational unit right here. So make sure you right click the home, homelab.com, then new, organizational unit. We call this whatever we want. So this would be a domain. If we wanted to uh, have many domains, maybe we have an office over in, well I'm from Phoenix, maybe we have an office in Phoenix, maybe we have another one in Scottsdale, and we have one in Fountain Hills and we're trying to, to kind of separate it out, maybe our accounting department's in Scottsdale, but our operations department's in Phoenix, we can we could set that up, right? So I'm gonna call, I'm just gonna use city names around Phoenix, I'm gonna call the first one Scottsdale, just like that, uh, and we're gonna hit okay, and you can see Scottsdale's in there. I'm actually gonna create a second one, I'm gonna do new organizational unit. And for my home lab, I'm gonna call this one Glendale, just like so. So I've got to. You can make more if you wanted to. It's not a big deal. So the first one we're going to do is Scottsdale. We're going to add, right click on it, new, and we're going to do a new user, just like that. Now I could put this user anybody I want. So I'm just going to call the first user, uh, first name I'm going to say A, and then last name I'm going to say Apple. So you can see the full name is A Apple. Uh, and I'm going to make the user log on. I'm going to do A A P uh, P P L E. So A Apple is going to be the full name at home lab. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to get password. Well, I'm going to make the password Tor, and then confirm the password Tor. Uh, user must change password to next log on. Uh, so we're going to require them to change their password to next log on, and we're going to say you can say password never expires. I'm going to click that for the purposes of a home lab but I'm not going to, if I was in an enterprise network, I definitely wouldn't do that, right? Um, but for this today, we're just gonna make the user change password at next logon. Let me, I have to do never expire. So I'm gonna do change password at next logon. I'm gonna hit next, and you can see that I'm going to finish that, okay? Uh, Windows cannot set password to A Apple because the password, okay, so we have to change the password, no big deal. I'm gonna make that again, Tor, one, two, three, exclamation mark, Tor, one, two, three, exclamation mark. Now I can do, I could create a password policy, which we're gonna do in a little bit, actually. So let me go ahead and press next. We'll get that up and going. And you can see that I've got user a Apple, uh, type is user, and I could add a description onto that if I really wanted to. Um, but that's the first easy way to do it. So we've got our a Apple right here. And you can see that I've got all these little fields that I can fill in. I can add a street, I can add a city, PO box. I can put in a, a different account. I can say the password never expires, which we already did. I can add a profile path if I wanted to. I could add telephone, organization. Uh, I can do all kinds of different things with that. But for right now, we're just gonna do the user, uh, the general, which is the first name, last name, so on and so forth. And I'm just gonna press okay. So the second way we're gonna do it, we're actually gonna put it in the Glendale, is I'm going to add a user via the command prompt. So I'm gonna open up the command prompt and I'm gonna do a DS add, just like so. And you can see that it gives me all kinds of different options, right? I could add DS add user, I can use quota, I can do all this other stuff. But the better way is to go to this website right here, um, and this is on Microsoft, and you can see that it provides you with all the parameters that we could utilize in DS add. Now at the very top, it kind of goes through and it says, hey, this is what you need to add if you want to do it all over. Now a lot of people are gonna make scripts for this, um, so they can just knock it out in one foul go. I actually don't have a script, so I put mine in Word, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I created it as Word, I added DS add user, I said, hey, here's the name, it's gonna be B Banana, uh, it's gonna be in the Glendale organizational unit, uh, home lab is gonna be the DC, it's gonna be a .com, the SAM ID is gonna be Banana, uh, the UPN is gonna be Banana at homelab.com, uh, first name is gonna be B, last name is Banana, it's gonna display as B banana. 
Uh, we're going to not disable the password, so it's not a disabled account, excuse me. And then the password is going to be Tor123 uh, exclamation mark. And it asks, do we want to make them change the password? Must change password? Yes. So I'm going to grab all that. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to throw it into our Windows system right here. Let me scroll down a little bit. And you can see by right clicking it, it adds it on there. And let's see if it gives me any issues. It doesn't. It looks like it was added successfully. If I go back to my window and I look at Glendale, uh, it's not there. So to refresh it, we're just going to press action and then refresh right here. And then you can see there's B Banana right there as a user. I can click on that one and it's added in there as well. So both those are that's the second way. Okay, so now we've got our Glendale and we have our Scottsdale within our organizational units. We created a user for each one. Uh, and uh, I think we're going to wrap up that for today. We're going we're gonna to knock out some password policies as well as a little bit more into Server 2019 next time. Uh, if this was helpful, if you felt like you learned something, please like, subscribe, and hit that little alert button. We will see you next time. Thank you, everyone.